I accurately forecasted Joe Biden's Electoral College victory in 2020, which he won 306 to 232. Additionally, I'll be sharing my updated electoral map projection between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris in this video, which comes just five days before the 2024 election. One of the most fascinating election cycles in American history has likely been this one. Only five months ago, Joe Biden was still the front-runner to win the Democratic nomination, but he withdrew from the race in mid-July. In August and September, this race truly appeared to be competitive, with Kamala Harris securing her place at the top of the ticket. Many left-leaning people even believed Harris would win. But all along, I have stayed true to my predictions. Because of how different this election is from 2020, I've always favored Trump. Across the board, the former president is polling much better and is far more popular. Trump started his last surge about a week or two ago, which was similar to what happened in 2016, when everyone believed Hillary Clinton was headed for a landslide win. Although Donald Trump was unexpected, there were early indications that he was gaining ground in the polls the week before the election. And we are currently witnessing precisely that. It hasn't been the case since Kamala Harris entered the race, but Donald Trump has actually surpassed her in the popular vote for the first time and is ahead in all seven swing states. We will now finally dive straight into the projection. First, both candidates are in a strong state, meaning that either Trump or Harris will win by at least 15 percentage points. This is undoubtedly a high bar to reach. California and Washington on the West Coast, along with Hawaii, Illinois, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware, Maryland, the District of Columbia, and the 1st District of Maine are the safe blue states for Harris. Trump will easily win the following states, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, South Carolina, North and South Dakota, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and all of Nebraska except its second district. It is a virtual tie since both candidates have these solid states filled in. Trump at 122, Harris at 131. Referring back to the map, we will now fill in the states where either candidate is most likely to win by 7 to 15 points. There will be a noticeable increase in competition among these states. Although there will be some competition, one candidate will continue to have a significant advantage. Therefore, we will start with the states that Donald Trump is most likely to win. Let's start with the two most apparent. For example, he has won both of the previous two elections in Alaska by double-digit margins. Even though Alaska has been moving to the left in recent years, he will not lose the state. The second district of Maine is another. He will also win that for the third time. Then, of course, there are Iowa and Ohio in the Midwest. In 2020, these two states were expected to be fierce rivals. According to polls, Trump would only win by 1%. But take a look at what transpired. He won by 8 in Iowa and 8 in Ohio. And according to polling, Trump is leading these two contests by roughly 6 to 8 points this time. He will most likely be able to surpass the double-digit threshold, but it won't be sufficient for these two races to be deemed solid. It's unlikely that Trump will win them by more than 15 points. However, the former president will be able to rely on Iowa and Ohio. He will receive 23 more electoral votes as a result. Then there are two more states in the Sun Belt that are probably going to elect Trump. Trump won it by six votes after it started in Texas, another state where polls showed him leading by just 1% in 2020. In 2016, he went by nine, and he is currently on course to achieve his biggest margin to date. According to Texas polling, he is up 10%. He may even approach the 15-point mark, 
which hasn't been crossed by a Republican since Mitt Romney in 2012. The fact that Texas has been moving to the left is no secret. It is undoubtedly less Republican than it used to be. However, it will take another two to three decades for this state to turn blue. Consider the sheer number of people in Texas. If Democrats hope to win the Lone Star State, they will need to win over millions and millions of voters. That just isn't going to happen anytime soon. Texas will therefore probably continue to be red. Last but not least is Florida. In the past, the Sunshine State was among the closest in the nation. Take 2012, for example. It was the only state determined by two points or less and the only tilt state on the map. Trump won by a narrow margin of 1.2% in 2016. Everyone then believed that Joe Biden would win Florida in 2020. In addition to losing it, he did worse than Clinton did four years prior. Additionally, Trump's Florida margin is likely to triple once more, as it did between 2016 and 2020. It is likely that Trump will either win the Sunshine State by a double-digit margin or just under it. Donald Trump now has 219 electoral votes, just 51 votes short of the presidency, after all the reliable and likely states have been filled in. It's time for Kamala Harris to catch up. We will now fill in her probable states when it begins to move west. In Oregon, a state that Hillary Clinton was likely to win in 2016. Compared to its two neighbors, the state is just less liberal. In fact, although the Democrat ultimately won, the 2022 Oregon governor's race was decided by a mere tenth of a mile. In addition, two states that are no longer as liberal as their northeastern neighbors are New York and New Jersey. In 2020, Joe Biden won them by wide margins, but Kamala Harris won't be able to duplicate his performance. Biden won New York by 23 points, while New Jersey was hardly blue at all. Given how badly Democrats are performing in New York, Kamala Harris will be lucky if she wins by even half that margin. It is no longer the Democratic bastion that it was. Therefore, the vice president is likely to be from both of these states. Finally, we have Colorado, which will be much more competitive, even though Joe Biden won it by 14 points four years ago. Kamala Harris is expected to win it by just over seven points. However, given how blue it was in 2020, this state is unlikely to come that close. That leaves us with the second district of Maine and the 12 most competitive races in the nation. These states are going to be the ones who ultimately choose the 47th president. They have all the power to choose our next commander-in-chief, even though they only account for less than 25% of the 538 votes cast in the Electoral College. We will now complete the lean states for each of the candidates. These are states that will be won by Trump or Harris by 2-7% to margins. Since we are aware that this election will ultimately be decided by a group of seven, we will begin this time by addressing the lean Harris states in order to clear the path. Seven important battlegrounds. These lean states for Harris are all ones that Joe Biden won by probably slim margins four years prior. These states are much more competitive now that Harris is at the top of the ticket, even though they weren't that close the last time. Harris is going to win the race by less than seven points when I get out west in New Mexico. Without a doubt, the state can become competitive. Take a look at the events of 2016. Clinton's victory was only 8%. Furthermore, given that New Mexico's Hispanic voters are steadily moving further to the right, I wouldn't be shocked if Harris did even worse. We also have Minnesota, the home state of Tim Walls. This one is significant. Harris's running mate hails from this state, and she won't even be able to surpass Joe Biden in performance. Harris, who was from far away from Minnesota, was Joe Biden's running mate when he won Minnesota by seven points. Naturally, California is her home state. Hillary Clinton nearly lost the state completely in 2016. Trump can thus undoubtedly compete here. 
Although selecting walls most likely prevented Kamala Harris from suffering a crushing defeat, it hasn't been demonstrated that this is sufficient for her to surpass the incumbent president. Just 70% of you have actually subscribed before we continue. For more content like this before the election on November 5th, when we hope to reach our target of 300,000 subscribers, kindly take a moment to subscribe now. Only three lean blue states remain, along with Nebraska's 2nd District, which Harris is expected to win by about five points due to 2021 redistricting that made the district more liberal. In essence, it's Omaha and a few of the suburbs that surround it. New Hampshire and Maine, two states that were fiercely competitive in 2016, are up in the Northeast. Clinton leads Maine by less than three points and Granite State by less than half a point. Harris won't do as badly as Clinton, but she won't do any better than Biden, who won Maine by nine votes and New Hampshire by seven. Therefore, both of these races will be in the middle. They will be slender and blue. Last but not least, the race in Virginia will be every bit as fierce as the one in 2016, in which Hillary Clinton won by a mere five points. At that point, she decided to run alongside Tim Kaine, a senator from the Commonwealth of Virginia who was actually in office. Even winning the state by a likely margin was beyond her reach. However, Joe Biden won it by 10.1% in 2020. It is unlikely that Kamala Harris will win Virginia by a wide margin. Compared to four years ago, there will be a lot more competition. With all of these lean Harris states and solid likely states filled in, she now has 226 electoral votes, just behind Trump's 219 total. However, we must keep in mind that the lean red states are just the beginning. Therefore, these seven states are the seven battlegrounds that are highlighted in yellow on almost all electoral maps. In every other state, the outcomes are essentially preset. The Trump's success in races that are meant to be evenly contested is the reason we have lean states for him in this category. Therefore, we will essentially map out Trump's route to victory by identifying which states he will win by the biggest margins and which of these seven will be the most competitive. For that reason, it is likely that Arizona will vote to the right of Georgia and North Carolina, which it did not do in either 2016 or 2020. Trump won Arizona by a margin of 3.5% in 2016. Then he lost to Joe Biden by 0.3. The state of Arizona is extremely competitive. It has historically been Republican, but in the past 10 or so years, it has moved to the left. Two Democratic senators are currently serving on it. Whether it was the 2022 governor's race, in which Carrie Lake lost, or the Senate election in which Kerry Lake lost to Ruben Gallego. Republicans haven't always picked the best candidates for the down-balance races. We've also seen Republicans put a Martha McSally twice. She was a complete failure. In Arizona, races can be won by Republicans. Simply put, they haven't been selecting the most qualified applicants. Trump, however, is a formidable contender. He will succeed in winning Arizona it will have a Republican slant. Right now, I'm predicting that the former president will win by about 3%. North Carolina and Georgia are also to the east. Republicans appear to have strong early voting numbers in these two states. Trump will undoubtedly win both of them. Although he lost Georgia in 2020, he did win North Carolina. In the whole nation, it was the most competitive state. Since Bill Clinton in 1992, Biden was the first Democrat to win it. Additionally, Georgia, which has historically been a Republican stronghold, lost to Romney by eight points in 2012 and to Trump by five points in 2016. In 2008, John McCain even won it by a margin of five. And it was 16 points during the Bush administration. Georgia will thus once again be in the Republican column. Although it won't be a significant win for Trump, it will be sufficient. For the former president, this is the second step to victory. Additionally, he will triumph in North Carolina, the only swing state where he has won in each of the previous two elections.
Trump currently has 262 electoral votes. In the remaining 270 upper Midwestern states, he can win any three of them. I sincerely appreciate you all watching. For more content like this in the run-up to the November 5th election, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe right now.